The Clash of Clans World Championship is around the corner. Therefore, of course, many of you may be asking what is the current best strategy in the new hard mode which all of the pros will be using. In this video, I'll be answering that question and will show you the two best attack strategies you can expect to see a lot at the World Championship this weekend. So let's hop right into the first attack and here, of course, the first attack strategy which you guys have probably already been thinking of is the Super Witch Fireball attack strategy. It is so incredibly good in hard mode and also, of course, without hard mode, it's a very, very strong attack strategy in general. Or well, in general, any attack strategy together with a fireball is probably the best attack strategy currently in the hard mode because the only thing that changes is that you need an extra earthquake instead of if you have a max fireball because, well, as many of you probably already know, equipments are kept. Normal equipment in the hard mode is kept at level 15. And epic equipment is kept at level 21. So as well as, of course, the fireball. Very simple. You just take out a specific part of the base with the fireball. Like, for example, in this case, you'll hear I landed the fireball on top of the multi archer tower. It is an incredibly good funnel. You instantly funnel in your super witches together with the king. The king with the earthquake boots can open up the complete core of the base. So you first use the jump spell. Then in the, in the middle of the base you use the earthquake boots of the king. And with that have some very very easy free stars. Then of course you can also send in the RC together with the rocket spear. RC with the rocket spear is a very very good combination hard mode. It just feels like... The epic equipments, even though they get capped from level 27 to level 21, they even get stronger in the hard mode because the difference in hard mode between epic equipment and normal equipment just gets so significant because most of the common equipment is not very strong in the hard mode because they are capped at level 21. So for example, the Hawk Puppet is not very strong, the Giant Arrow is well, basically useless because you can only take out sweepers, you can't take out air defenses and of course you need a whole lot more lightning spells to take out the defenses you want to take out. And you can already see this is a triple. I even was able to swag my queen ability so I didn't even need to use my queen ability to get the three stars on the board. And that just makes this attack strategy so incredibly strong. All three of my super witches which I brought into the attack are still alive in the end of the attack. So Super Witches with a Fireball, probably the best attack currently in the hard mode and you can expect to see that a lot from the pros this weekend. Let's take a look at this attack strategy once more and this time on another base type. Once again, small Warden Walk together with the Fireball to take out a small portion of the base. Very simple, didn't even use an Invis spell this time. Just instantly landed a fireball on top of the Builder Hut. Two Earthquakes with that, the Expo as well as the scatter shot are gone. Of course, the value is not too good. But with this attack strategy, you don't need to get a whole lot of value with your fireball. The main thing is basically funneling. If the main thing which you want to use your fireball for is funneling. The funneling is way more important than the fireball value itself. Because separate witches are incredibly strong. They don't mind if you still have a lot of key defenses against you. They don't mind if you have to encounter the clan castle without a poison spell because you can't bring a, po bring a poison spell into this army. They don't mind. They don't mind at all. Super witches mostly stay alive throughout the whole attack. And then some. You don't. You can bring in a few druids as well with the attack strategy. They can do a lot of work into the core of the base like Layla just did. I mainly like to bring some ice golems instead of druids. But it's basically just it basically just comes down to personal preference. Some people like to bring one or two or maybe three druids. You don't want to bring more. You really need those healers currently because the druids just transform way too quickly. But you can see this case he used the he used the Earthquake's boot first, so he used the King ability first and then he used the jump spell to open up the tunnel compartment. But once again, all of his Super Witches are left in the attack. All of three of his Super Witches are still alive in the end of the attack and you can see this Warden, this Grand Warden is not able to stop this attack. Will be completely unable to stop the Archer Queen together with the Warden together with three of the Super Witches. 
which can also spawn big boys indefinitely. And with that, once again, the hard mode gets incredibly easy and getting three stars becomes a piece of cake. So you can expect to see a very, very high hit rate with this attack strategy in the Clash World Championship. If the pros decide to use it on some bases, you can expect this to work out a whole lot of the times. And before we continue with the next attack, quick reminder, if you want to buy any in-game items, like for example the gold pass, the event pass, or maybe some of the event resources or skins, as well as the scenery, then make sure that you are using a creator code. To support this channel, it would be code RHBB. That would of course be much appreciated, as well as maybe a like and a follow on this video. I would really, really appreciate that. If you want to see more of my content, like for example my live streams, my Twitch, as well as my TikTok are linked above. But now let's not waste any more time and let's directly hop to the next attack. Next attack strategy and here we have the Warden Charge with the Fireball as well as the Rocket Loons. Also a very very strong attack strategy mainly also in hard mode because as I already said with the first attack strategy with the Fireball it doesn't make a huge difference that your Fireball that your epic equipment is kept at level 21 on this base. This, the attacker really, really nicely found out that you can easily take out the Town Hall with a Flame Flinger. There was not much in front of the Flame Flinger, so we needed a total of three Earthquake spells in this attack strategy. One to activate the Town Hall, and then of course two for his Fireball. But the Warden, together with the Angry Jelly, can easily take out a large portion of the base and then get really, really deep into the base very quickly. So after the roughly 30 seconds which you have with the Angry Jelly, the Warden already took out a major of defenses and then with a few invisibility spells, most of the times you can really land your Fireball deep into the base and always get the core. The core, of course, is most in most bases very, very compact. And if you are able to take out most of that damage with your Fireball, then of course there is not much left which can defend your attack strategy. So can defend your heroes, can defend your Rocket Loons. On most attacks you don't even need your Rocket Loons, only your heroes are able to take out most of the base. The only thing which you really have to watch out for is that you do not lose your Warden early on. If you lose your Warden before, uh, playing your fireball that is really the main reason how this attack strategy could fail if you lose your warden afterwards so once you've already landed the fireball on the core of the base and the core of the base has been taken out most of the times your attack strategy can still work because you have so many spells you still have your rc which you can deploy somewhere with the rocket spear and she can also take out a huge portion of the base and then of course you still have roughly 10 to maybe 15 rocket loons which also can take out a huge portion of the base can take out certain defenses you always want to use the rocket loons to take out some defenses on the outside of the base so you can save up some invisibility spells or your fireball to land in the middle of the base but we will be taking a look at how to do exactly that in the next attack once again a very very similar base setup on this one and also a very similar attack a warden walk or warden short for the eagle artillery compartment then you use your rocket loons to take out the outside defenses like for example now here the cannons as well as the mortars as well as some of the tesla as well as of course most importantly the outside defenses at both two o'clock as well as four o'clock because that's where you really needed an invisibility spell elsewise if you didn't take them out with the with the rocket loons also, on most bases currently, you can get a whole lot of value with a Flame Flinger because people don't watch out when it comes to Flame Flingers. People don't really take uh, keep an eye out for Flame Flingers. We have always had a time-based meta. The mortars were not that important. Nobody was using a Flame Flinger because Flame Flingers, of course, take a lot of time. And if it's a time-based meta, then of course you can't be using a Flame Flinger. Now in this attack strategy, Viper, he used his RC not in the end of the attack, but in the beginning of the attack to also take out a huge portion of the base and, and therefore save up a few invisibility spells. If he were, didn't take out the 6 o'clock corner, 
then of course he would have needed maybe two or three or maybe four invisibility spells to land his fireball in the desired place. Unfortunately for him, he forgot to bring a third earthquake spell, so therefore the CC as well as the multi archer towers didn't go down after the fireball because as I said earlier, now in the hard mode, because the fireball is capped at level 21, you need two earthquake spells to take out every single building instead of one. Of course, even fireball together with two uh, earthquake spells is still not enough to take out both the town hall as well as the eagle artillery. But in this case, on this base, it didn't matter too much that the clan castle as well as the multi archer towers were still left standing. There were no builder huts healing up the multi archer towers, so they were still standing on 1 HP. And of course, he had a little luck. He was a little fortunate that there was only an ice golem clan castle. So therefore, that also was not a problem. He could easily take out the clan castle with the warden because it was doing absolutely no damage. But with that, I hope you learned something and I hope you guys are also as excited as I am for the World Championships to see some really, really nice attacks in the current hard mode. If you guys are attending Superfest in Helsinki, I will also be there. So if you see me and want to say hello, then feel free to do so. I, will, I would love to meet some of you guys in Helsinki. But also for the people at home, I wish you guys a lot of fun and hope you will learn something cool from all these pro players. But with that, I would say see you guys soon with the next video. Until then, see ya and bye bye.